Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Padaya Bhutale, Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namani. Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pacharna Nivasesha Shunyavati, Paska Chade Satarani. Jaya Si Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda Sri Adaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasadi Gobhakta Binda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. In the next few days at least, till Gaur Purnima at least, I thought it would be wise and uh, beneficial to speak on Lord Chaitanya. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is none other than the manifest form of Sri Radha and Krishna in one. He is the life and soul of all devotees who strictly follow in the footsteps of Srila Rupa Goswami. Sri Rupa Goswami and Srila Sanatan Goswami are the two principal followers of Srila Sarup Damodar Goswami Maharaj, who acted as the most confidential servitor of Lord Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. A direct disciple of Srila Rupa Goswami was Srila Raghunath Das Goswami. The author of Sri Chaitanya Chaitamrita, Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, stands as the direct disciple of Srila Rupa Goswami and Srila Raghunath Das Goswami. The direct disciple of Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami was Srila Naratam Das Thakur, who accepted Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur as his servitor. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur accepted Srila Jagannath Das Babaji, who was the spiritual master of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur who in turn initiated Srila Gorkishwar Das Babaji, the spiritual master of Om Vishnupad Srila Bhakti Siddhanta. Prabhupada says, since I belong to this chain of discipular succession from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this edition of Sri Chaitanya Chaitamrita will contain nothing newly manufactured by our teeny brain. Rather, it is only the remnants of subject matter originally spoken by the Lord himself. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu does not belong to the mundane plane of the three qualitative modes. He belongs to the transcendental plane beyond the reach of imperfect sense perception. Even the most erudite mundane scholars cannot approach the transcendental plane unless they submit to the transcendental sound with a receptive mood. For it is only in that mood of submission, surrender, that one can realize the message of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Prabhupada goes on to say, that what will be described herein, therefore, has nothing to do with the experimental thoughts created by the speculative habits. The subject matter of Chaitanya Chaitamrita is not a mental concoction, but a factual spiritual experience. And this experience can be realized only by accepting the line of discipular succession any deviation from that line will bewilder the disciple or the reader's understanding of the mystery of Sri Chaitanya. Chaitanya Chaitamrita is a transcendental literature meant for the postgraduate study of one who has realized all Vedic literatures, such as Upanishads, Vedanta, and their natural commentaries. Srimad Bhagavatam and Srimad Bhagavad Gita. 
Srila Prabhupada says that his edition of Sri Chaitanya Chaitamrita is meant for the study of sincere scholars, scholars who are truly seeking the absolute truth. This book is not the arrogant scholarship of a mental speculator, but a sincere effort to serve the order of the superior authorities in discipular succession. It does not deviate even slightly from the revealed scriptures, and therefore anyone who follows in the discipular line will be able to realize the essence of this book. The first chapter of Sri Chaitanya Chaitamrita begins with 14 Sanskrit verses. These 14 slogas describe the absolute truth. Then the next three Sanskrit verses describe the principal deities of Vrindavan. These deities are Sri Radha Malama Mohan, Sri Radha Govinda Dev, and Sri Radha Gopinathji. The first of the 14 verses is a symbolic representation of the Supreme Truth. And the entire first chapter is actually devoted to the single verse which describes Lord Chaitanya in his six different manifestations. That first verse says, I offer my respectful obeisances unto the spiritual masters, the devotees of the Lord, the Lord's incarnation, his plenary portions, his energies, and the primeval Lord himself, Sri Krishna Chaitanya. You notice that he begins with the spiritual masters. According to the deliberate opinion of all revealed scriptures, the spiritual master is non-different from Krishna. Lord Krishna, in the form of the spiritual master, delivers his disciples. The relation the relationship of a disciple with his spiritual master is as good as his relationship with the Supreme Lord. I have several times mentioned that when I first came to Krishna consciousness and heard Srila Prabhupada speak on Bhagavad Gita, I had a dream. And in that dream I saw Lord Krishna on the chariot with Arjuna instructing Bhagavad Gita to him. Then in my dream, Lord Krishna changed into Srila Prabhupada. And, and Lord... And Sri Arjuna changed into my humble self at his lotus feet. A spiritual master who is genuine never represents himself as Krishna in all respects. Rather, he always represents himself as the humblest servitor of the personality of Godhead. Still, the disciple must look upon him as the manifest representation of Godhead. Then Krishna Das Kaviraj quotes a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, 11th canto, 17th chapter, 27th verse. This was spoken to Uddhava, in what is now called the Uddhava Gita. Or jisko ab Uddhava Gita kete hain. He was specifically instructing Uddhava how a brahmachari should behave under the care of a spiritual master. A spiritual master is not an enjoyer of facilities offered by his disciples. But he is like a parent Without the attentive service of his parents, a child cannot properly grow to manhood. Similarly, without the care of the bona fide spiritual master, one cannot rise to the place of pure devotional service. The spiritual master is also called acharya, or transcendental professor of the spiritual science. The Manosamhitas explains the duties of an acharya, which is to describe, which is to take charge of his disciple and teach him the Vedic knowledge 
with all its intricacies. By this he gives him second birth. The ceremony performed to initiate a disciple into the study of spiritual science is called upaniti, or that function which brings one nearer to the spiritual master. One who cannot be brought nearer to the spiritual master cannot have a sacred thread, and thus he remains a sudra. The sacred thread on the body of a brahmana, chetriya, Vaisha is a symbol of initiation by a bona fide spiritual man. It is nothing if worn merely to boast of high parentage. The duty of the spiritual master is to initiate a disciple with the sacred thread ceremony. And after this samskara or purificatory process, the spiritual master actually begins to teach the disciple about the Vedas. Even a person born a Sudra is not barred from spiritual initiation if he is approved by the spiritual master. He is duly authorized to award a disciple the right to be a Brahmana. In the Vayu Purana, the Acharya is defined as one who knows the import of the Vedic literatures, explains the, uh, the purpose of the Vedas, abides by their rules and regulations, and teaches his disciples to act in the same way. If one poses himself as an Acharya, but does not have an attitude of servitorship to Krishna, he must be considered an offender. And this offensive attitude disqualifies him from being an Acharya. Thank you very much.